and happy Sunday. This is Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com and today is Sunday, December the 19th. And in case you just completely lost track of time, we are almost to Christmas. So let me get caught up with you all here just to make sure I can see all of your comments. Fantastic, I am here with you. So hello, hello everybody. Um, hello and happy Sunday. It's so good to see you all. Let me set something here so my phone does not slide away. I broke the case on my phone. So, sorry if that's a little bit loud. Come on, phone, sit still. Anyway, broke the case on my phone, so it does not want to sit still. Okay, hello and happy Sunday, everybody. I am Kelly. This is if you have an egg.com. We are back for, and hello, oh, uh-oh. John is saying hello from Peanuts Playhouse. So, that means Alyssa is already at my house. Okay, so hello, John and Alyssa, and hello, Hattie. Um, but, hey, hello, everyone. If you are brand new, please do give us a shout out. And we would love to welcome you and to say hello to you. And let's see, we've got Kay is popping in. And I may have to change where my phone is. Hello, Carol Lou. I've got my Christmas card. Hold on, let me get the right direction. There's the Christmas card that Carol, whoa, finger go the right way. There's the Christmas card that Carol sent for me. That is so pretty, thank you very much. Hello, Sandra from Demon's Ferry. Tanya is sneaking in. But yeah, let us know if you're brand new. We would love to welcome you. You can see, hello, Marianne from Pennsylvania. You can not see, you can hear Still got the East Tennessee crud going around. I don't know what we have to do to get rid of it. Alyssa and I have both been to the doctor and they were like, just wait it out. So I guess we're just gonna wait it out. Hello, Myrna, it is good to see you. I do miss seeing you on Sundays. And Karen says, I want that sweater. So a lot of people want this sweater. I, this is so old. I don't even know how long I've had it. Hello, Judy. Um, hello, Connie. I don't even, and hello, Vicki from St. Louis. I don't know how long I've had this sweater, but everybody wants this sweater. And on the bottom, it says resting Grinch face. So yeah, it is one of my favorite sweaters. I wear it, I just, gosh, in the last two weeks, I've probably worn it four times. But anyway, hello, Judy. It's good to see you. Hello, Elaine. Yeah, it is December the 19th. It is almost Christmas. We're going to talk about here, that here in just a second. Hello, Deborah. Merry Christmas. Patty is sneaking in. So hello, hello, everyone. Hello, Lynn. Um, yep, Marianne. I don't, yep, Marianne loves the sweater, too. Um, again, if you're new, let us know. If you're watching this on YouTube, and that's just youtube.com, search if you have an egg, please go ahead and say hi and hello. Hello, Vicki. Go ahead and say hi and hello. Y'all have gotten so quiet on YouTube, it's not even funny. We had, I don't know, two weeks. Right after we started the new program, we had two weeks of just chatter, 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 chatter on YouTube, and then you all have fallen silent on YouTube. So anyway, I love hearing from you all on there too, and hello, Sherry. So if I don't get to everybody, just know that I am saying hi and hello, even to the people that it irritates. But I don't care. And it's Christmas and I can do whatever I want to. And it's my chat, so I can do whatever I want to. Hello, Tag. It's good to talk to you. And Trish has just um, snuck in. So I don't know if y'all know this or not, but we are, oh, wait, Julie. Wait, Julie's here. And she is watching while she's making dinner. So everybody welcome Julie, even though she is not new. She is back after a long time away. And I think she's cooking dinner while we're having the chat so that she can keep herself out of trouble. And she knows what I mean. And anybody that was here when she was here before knows what I mean. Oh, and it's Sandra, uh, Sandra's grandson Liam's eighth birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Hello, Linda. Hello, Betty Ann. But I don't know if y'all have realized this or not, but we are only five days and a handful of hours away from Christmas. Hello, Linda from Rock Island. But we're, we're five days and a handful of hours away from Christmas. So even if you don't celebrate Christmas, it's coming. So it is coming and it's coming really, really quickly. So we are under the one week mark. Um, so again, that's not WW related, but I thought you all might need to know. Oh, and Trish is out with some friends. Hello, Trish's friends. Merry Christmas. I hope y'all have a good time. Um, but I thought y'all might need to know in case you, for some reason, missed it. In case you missed that we were, you know, five days and some change away. Okay. On that same vein, so the, the WW news that I have for this week that's still for the month of December because we're still in the month of December, um, is all about what to do last minute. So I'm going to be running through, while I'm trying to say hi and hello to you all, I'm going to be running through, hello Orlando Debbie, I miss, we miss being down there with you at Christmas time very much. So I'm drinking out of my last time we were there for Christmas mug, but anyway, that's an insider, that's an insider thing, and hello, and yes, and Betty Ann says she likes my shirt. So I'll show everybody one more time, aloha Kathy, this is my resting Grinch face um, sweater, and it's one of my favorite Christmas sweaters, even though it is like worn out. But anyway, I love it. Okay, so we are five days and some change away from Christmas Day. And in case it has snuck up on you, we're going to be talking about that a lot. Um, this chat, I'm going to run through some quick names as part of our as part of our new 
I mean, as part of our, um, you know, prep for Christmas. And I just wanted to sidetrack real quick, though, and say Karen says that she hears that people are struggling with a new program. I would love to know who and what they're struggling with because this thing is fantastic. It is the best, literally the best program that they have had since um, Points Plus. And hello, Mary from Pittsburgh. I'm serious. I think it's the best program that they've had since Points Plus. So I'm not, I don't say that to be um, argumentative. I would love to know. I mean, seriously, if somebody's having trouble with the new program, please, please, please let me know because we'd love to get you some help because this thing is fantastic. Okay, so real quick though, we're going to run through some really quick things in case you you just realized that it's five days and a few hours, you know, from Christmas. So first thing for anybody currently panicking because they somehow did not realize that Christmas was um, was coming on the 25th this year. So is there anybody who didn't realize that, the, that Christmas was on the 25th this year? Anybody? Yeah, yeah, and Carol's got some tweaking to do. Totally understand that, totally understand. Whoops, and I missed somebody, hold on. Marlene, hello Marlene. So if there's anybody who didn't realize that Christmas was coming on the 25th this year, okay, um, this is for you. So th this message is for you. The following major grocery stores and convenience store chains, chains will be open on Christmas Eve and some of them on Christmas Day, but you need to check your local, you know, you need to check your local information. But this is what I, this is what I hear is that these will be open on Christmas Eve for sure, and most of these on Christmas Day, but again, I would check locally. So, um, 7-Eleven, Albertsons. Oh wait, Marianne is struggling because she can't get the app to work. Okay, Marianne, I'm, somebody please message me that I need to circle back around to Marianne, okay? Um, because if her app's not working, we need to talk about that, but we don't need to talk about it at this moment. But somebody help me remember to circle back around to Marianne either today or to private message her. But anyway, so 7-Eleven, Albertsons, Circle K, total love, you know, something is afoot at the Circle K. So I need to go find one. Um, CVS, which we have one just across the street. So that's good to know that they're going to be open. Giant Food Stores, Rite Aid, Safeway, Speedway, Starbucks, Really, that counts as a major grocery store or convenience store? And Wawa. So all of those stores should be open for sure Christmas Eve, maybe Christmas Day. But for those of you who didn't know, that didn't know that you needed to panic yet, the following are reported to be closed. Hello, Marlene, are, are reported to be closed on Christmas Day. So go ahead and panic now if you were planning on going on Christmas Day to get your last minute shopping at Aldi, BJ's, Costco, Dollar General, Dollar Tree. So no last minute Dollar Tree craft ideas, ladies, okay? They will not be open on Christmas day. Um, thank you, Orlando Debbie. Thank you very much for messaging me that. Um, so Dollar Tree, those last minute projects are out. Family Dollar, H-E-B, Hy-Vee, Kroger, uh-oh, Publix, uh-oh, Ralph's, Sam's Club, ShopRite, Target, dun, dun, dun. Some of you literally just panicked because you realized that on Christmas Day, you can't pop into Target, okay? Target, Trader Joe's, ah, Walmart. I'm impressed, I'm impressed Walmart. Wegmans and Whole Foods, those stores are closed on Christmas Day, okay? And reportedly have limited hours on Christmas Eve. So if you hadn't already panicked, and this is my news, for this week in December. This is just my news. This is the best news I can give you or the, the most important news I can give you this week. Finally, for those of you who just need a break and want to eat out on Christmas Day, so I want to see a show of hands. Who, who doesn't cook on Christmas Day? So I saw, and I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch the name, but a second ago, somebody um, said that they have to work on Christmas Day. So if you have to work on Christmas Day, bless your heart and thank you. So whatever you do, if you're at a hospital, CVS, um, if you are at one of these places that is open, Starbucks, if you're one of those people, bless your heart. Thank you for being there. Thank you for being at CVS to fill prescriptions, you know, when we need it. Um, and Debbie, I, I have mixed feelings about that. Like CVS, I need them to be open for people who need medicine, okay? They don't necessarily need to be open for last minute gifts. But I have mixed feelings about that because I do have friends who have to work on Christmas Eve and Christmas morning, and they need to be able to run in somewhere and grab some stuff. But anyway, so who, though plans on, hello, hello, Terry. So who plans on eating out on Christmas day? So who plans on that? Oh wait, Betty gets a free meal at the hospital on Christmas day. Well, yay, you get a free, I mean, that's great. You get a free meal even though you have to work. Sorry about that. Hello, Alicia. 
So let me know, give me some thumbs ups. If you have to, if you have to work and you're going to eat out, eat a meal out on Christmas day, or if you're, if you just traditionally have a meal out on Christmas day. So give me some, you know, if you're traveling and you just stop somewhere and be able to eat. So give me some thumbs ups if you're going to be eating out and I'll give you some news on who should be open on Christmas day. And of course I don't have an all inclusive list. You know, this is just, you know, the ones that I could find and um, that I could find quickly. So for those of you who just need a break on Christmas day, or you've been cooking all week, or you're working or you know for whatever reason you need to you need you know you need to be able to find some food out on Christmas day um you can check out these brave establishments so these brave establishments will be you know will be open and please 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 heavily tip your server if it is somewhere okay yeah so Terry says she is a pharmacy tech and please don't wait until the last minute to fill your prescriptions seriously people seriously but it happens i mean things happen um but if you go somewhere and eat out, please, please, please heavily tip your server, okay? Because they are there on Christmas Day, just trying to, you know, just trying to make ends meet, um, or because they're lost one in New York, okay? So these places should be open. Again, check, check local. So Applebee's, I think that's a good choice. You know, that'd be a good, a good choice to go to. Benihana, not sure about that on Christmas. But, um, and Vicki, we're going to talk about what I'm making here in, just a, in a little bit. So Vicki's asking what we're going to make for Christmas Day. Bonefish Grill is Christmas Eve only. So if you were thinking about going there for a fancy dinner, um, you know, on Christmas Day, you can only go on Christmas Eve. Let's see who else have we got. Boston Market is including, they are open and they're including their annual heat and serve dinner. So you should be able to go to Boston Market and, you know, eat. And you can also grab a heat and serve meal if you need to grab one and take it home and heat it up. Cracker Barrel is closed on Christmas Day, but on Christmas Eve, you should still be able to pick up a heat and serve holiday meal, you know, on Christmas Eve. I would order ahead just to be sure, but you should be able to do that. And then you can, um, you know, you can heat and serve that on Christmas Day if you need to. And let's see who else. Um, Del Taco. It's not Tuesday, but if you need some tacos, Del Taco should be open. Denny's, you know, if you work the night shift, if you're, um, if you're a police officer, fireman, or fire, or as Alyssa calls them, fire ladies. Um, if you worked all night as a pharmacy tech, you know, and you need something to eat Christmas morning, go to Denny's. I mean, Denny's is a pretty good time usually when I go. So Denny's is open. Domino's Pizza in certain areas. So no, don't be sitting at home thinking, I'm just going to order Domino's. You might not be able to. So some Domino's are open, but know that they are locally owned franchises. So if your franchise decides not to be open on Christmas day, they might not be open. Uh, let's see, Domino's, um, Dunkin' Donuts, so you can get your Dunkin' on. IHOP, of course, if Denny's is open, IHOP is going to be open. McDonald's, of course, Panda Express, somebody just said, and I know Panda Express isn't technically Chinese food, it's it's Americanized Asian food, but, you know, but if you needed your Chinese food on, um, on Christmas Day, you could go to Panda Express. This one was interesting, Romano's Macaroni Grill, and we do not have one of those here anymore. I think the closest one is in Chattanooga, but Romano's Macaroni Grill will be hosting their annual Christmas dinner, and it looks like an event. So if you like to do something fancy like that on Christmas and you don't have any plans, you know, for you and your family, I would check out Romano's Macaroni Grill because it looks like an event, I mean, like a Christmas dinner event. I wouldn't wait too long. Shoney's is open. I don't know if the buffet is open, but Shoney's is open and Starbucks. So how does Starbucks make it on two lists? Starbucks was on the um, major grocery store and convenience store list, and they're also on the restaurant list. So none of that applies to Starbucks. But anyway, they are open. They made it onto two lists. Okay, so, so everybody go ahead and panic. Let's go ahead and get started with our chat. But I wanted to give you that news before we get going. The most important news though is who attended an in-person workshop last week. So we are sandwiched in between, no pun intended, sandwiched in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Whatever holiday you celebrate in this season of the year, we're smack dab in the middle of it. So give me some thumbs ups if you attended an in-person workshop last week. So let's see some thumbs ups for that. If you attended a, um, a um, Zoom workshop, Oh, but Linda's bottom was in a green chair again. Awesome, awesome. Let's see some thumbs ups if you attended a Zoom workshop. So I know, I think it was Lynn that was having trouble getting onto a Zoom workshop last week, and I hope you got that figured out. Um, Lynn, if you have any tips for how, if you did get in, if you did finally get into that workshop, and if you have any tips for what WW said to do to get in, 
if you would share those, that would be awesome. But yeah, thumbs ups for in-person workshops or Zoom workshops last week. Hearts. This is how old this sweater is. Look at this. Does anybody know how to fix that? I'm just distracted with this little string because I do not want to mess this very old sweater up. Anyway, hearts. If you attended here with us last week um, or if you watched it later on demand, so I'm seeing lots of thumbs ups and hearts. Yep, Marlene, Mary. Oh, Linda's digital only, but that's okay, Linda. You can still do thumbs ups for digital only or for watching here with us. Yep, so very good. So I want to say extra, extra, extra special Bravo. There are so many of you all here. This It is five days before Christmas. We are smack dab. I mean, like literally hot and heavy in the middle of this. Um, and I hope that my phone is not making a noise. My sister is wearing out my phone all of a sudden. Obviously, she does not know that we do this every Sunday night. Anyway, so Bravo stickers, big time Bravo stickers. Hello, Sherry. Um, oh, Sherry says she was late and heard no news. Sherry, it was just to let you know it's time to panic because we are five days away from Christmas. So you can go back and hear the news later or, or read it. It's just about it's just about panicking. But anyway, so big, 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 big Bravo stickers for everyone who is here this week. I mean, that's huge. You you literally seriously deserve a Bravo sticker for being here, you know, this week, five days before Christmas and being serious about this. So even if all you're doing this week is just hanging on, that's okay. And it's okay. You know, we've talked about intent. We're not going to talk about intentional maintenance tonight, but if you were on intentional maintenance this week and you're just hanging in there, that's awesome. Extra Bravo sticker to you just for hanging on instead of going, forget it. I'll just wait and rejoin at the beginning of January. Okay. That's not going to help any of us. So Fantastic and Bravo stickers to all of you all. So this month's theme is still, because we're still in the month of December, even though it feels like it's flying by, but this month's theme is finding balance and, or just find balance. And we are still trying to find balance in all of this, you know, holiday mayhem and work things and people getting ready to be on vacations. And I've got a couple of friends that work for the Tennessee state government and they are off from work until like the first week of January. I don't even know how to wrap my head around that. I mean, I'm happy for them, but I'm also like, what? That just seems like such a weird three week distru disruption, you know, into your, I don't know, into your schedule. I, I could, unless we were like going somewhere, I couldn't do that. So, but finding that balance, you know, finding balance, you know, especially this month, you know, with all of the holidays, that's what we've been talking about all month. So last week was chat number 252. And we were talking about the most, we were talking about making the most out of your budget. So that was especially important for me this week because we had our biggest pop-up market of the year. So um, we started doing these pop-up markets here at Casey Kitchen Center um, two years ago. It was right before COVID. And we only had like three or four of them under our belts before COVID hit. And we had to stop. We had to cease and desist all the pop-up markets. So this one is the, the market that we had this last week is what we should have had two years ago for the holiday market. So, I mean, it was wild. It was absolutely wild. It was busy, slammed, good, food. Um, I mean, you know, all kinds of stuff. And thank you, Sherry. I'll show you the bottom of it one more time. Resting rich face. Yep. So, but it was crazy. But having last week's chat talking about, talking about our budget saved my rear end. I mean, it saved it. We had a food truck every day for four days. Um, we had access to fantastic cookies. We had access, I mean, we had access to all of these sweet treats, all of these things that could have really, really, really gotten me in trouble. But last week, because we talked about, um, about budgeting, I was able to stay pretty close on my planned budget. Now I used all of my points. I used all of your points. I used all of everybody else's points. I'm just kidding. But I stayed pretty close to the budget that I had set for myself. I used all of my points every day. I used all of my weeklies. Hello, Loretta. I used all of my weeklies. I used every activity point, which I don't normally do. I used every water earned point uh, um, or added back point. I earned every vegetable added back point. I mean, I used all of them. But you know what, though? I didn't make myself sick. Um, I stayed I stayed to within, you know, pretty close to within the budget that I had um, set for every day. And I felt good and I felt great about the end of the week. So I think setting a budget, especially at this time of year, is very, very important. Um, and just, you know, trying trying to stick with it. And if you don't, you know, if you set a budget for 30 points in a day, if you're, you know, if you're, if you don't have that many points a day, but you set, you said, you know what, I'm going to stop at 30. I'm going to enjoy myself, but I'm going to, I'm going to stop at 30 points. And if you hit 31, 32 points, I still think that is a success because you, you set a budget and you stayed, you know, pretty, and pretty close to it. 
So I think it's still really important that you set a budget, go over what we talked about last week, the emotional, you know, there's an emotional budget. If it's something that's going to be, you know, emotional, like we don't get to have big Christmas this week. We have family members. Hello, Carol. We have family members. I mean, you know, I've been, Alyssa and I have been, even though Alyssa doesn't live with us, for some reason, she and I keep sharing the same snotty nose for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, but, and she's at our house tonight. But, um, you know, but there's going to be an emotional budget this week because we are going to have Christmas with her at her house, with her and Bo at their house. But we have had to postpone the big, the big Christmas with all of our family. We've had to postpone that for another week, for another week because of illness. Um, you know, and I want everybody to be well, but I don't know. There, there's just, there's going to have to be, I'm going to have to figure out another emotional budget for that. The next one was sales rep, drug, drug rep, well-meaning stranger in your office budget. We've still got two more of those coming and we've already had that I know of. We've already had a couple of them show up. It's been fantastic. I haven't, it's not been anything that I couldn't stay out of. Still have two more potentials coming this week. Fingers crossed. They remember what I said about Starbucks. You know, and they do that plan so that I can stay on plan. Um, and then ho ho hold it was your homework for this week. So hashtag ho ho hold it was your homework for this week. And I was just trying to remind you that it's okay to say no, thank you. That's still an acceptable response. You can skip the leftovers or you know in a to go box, um, and you can p politely decline offers that you hadn't budgeted for. It's okay. So your homework for this last week was hashtag ho ho hold it. You were supposed to find one holiday food um, or situation that you want to deal with and let us know how you're going to hold, hold, hold it. So we had some really good ones, but I picked three. So these three, Katie went to dinner as a holiday treat. And after one bite of the dessert, and I'm already, I'm already going to have to say how proud I am of her before I even finish this sentence. But after one bite of the dessert, she realized that it, it just didn't taste as good as she remembered it. So she remembered, you know, some fantastic dessert. They planned this place to go, went to, she took one bite and realized, oh, Wow, that's disappointing. That's not as good as I thought it was. And instead of finishing it, because I think it would have been really, really easy to go, well, you know, we just paid $9 for that, whatever the dessert was, you know, um, I guess I'll finish eating it, even though it's not good. She didn't, she didn't eat the rest of it. She just said, nope, pushed it out of the way. I'm extremely, extremely proud of you for that. Extremely. So she didn't eat it. She just ho ho hold it and moved it out of the way. Lynn and Marianne both had... Christmas cookie crisis. They they could have a near, they didn't have one, but they could have had a Christmas cookie crisis this week, both of them. But by ho-ho holding it, um, they either, one of them froze the rest of the cookies, um, one of them, or sent them away. Um, but, you know, counted them, counted what they ate, moved on, either froze the rest or sent the rest away. They avoided a crisis by ho-ho holding it. And then Vicki made, the, made a conscious decision to only include her favorite foods that were worth the points. So do you hear, did you hear the, the connection there? So she selected her, she consciously chose her favorite foods that were worth the points. So favorite means they were delicious. She loves them. She loves the person who made them, you know, whatever makes them her favorites also were worth the points because I've had some things that were very delicious that I thought, yeah, that's really good, but I just don't think it's worth that many. It's not that good. It's not that many points good. But so she calculated both of those um, and she and she did that and she nailed it and she pulled it off. And so she, she enjoyed the food that she had planned on in enjoying um, and she tracked it and she felt victorious about the decisions that she made. So instead of going, you know, instead of at the end of this going, well, I wish I hadn't eaten that, you know, great, I've blown it now, I might as well just start over in January. Um, instead of doing that, she was victorious at the end of it. So bravo, ladies, you did it. Good job on your homework. Here are more bravo, bravo stickers. So for everybody who did your homework last week, and just again for being here, more, more, more bravo stickers. Okay, this week, the topic is get together, stay on track. And I love that this week's W, this, so this past week's WW graphic the first thing that it said was on the graphic was imagine an upcoming event or meal and i thought really seriously i think that's all we've been imagining for the last few weeks am i right I and mean, that's all i've been thinking about for the last few weeks so they didn't really have to get me to imagine anything but there are lots of reasons to get together and believe it or not they don't all revolve around food 
um, we had a discussion in the showroom this week. So during the market, we had a discussion in the showroom this week about civilians. You know, those are people who have never had to wash their weight. They don't think about it. They don't They don't think, oh, you know, I've gained a half an ounce, you know, whatever. They just don't think about it. Um, so there are people that have, have not worried about their weight up or down, you know, either way, versus the rest of us. And when I mean the rest of us, there were three of us in this discussion in the showroom. One was a woman who constantly battles for weight, constantly battles with keeping her weight off. Um, one was me, also a woman, and I'm kind of in the middle. I mean, I do have to be conscious of it every single day, um, but I wasn't struggling, you know, I mean, like, I don't know, I'm kind of on the, I don't want to say I'm on the other side of this, but just I'm in a different place than she's at in, in weight loss. And then a very tall man who struggles every day to keep weight on. So that was an eye opener for me because I, I, I just had to, I had to stop talking and I said, wow, i would not considered that you have the same struggles that we do, but you're trying to keep weight on because he just, he, he just struggles with that. And so he's constantly thinking about food. So I'm, and I'm telling you, he did most of the talking, keeping weight on for him is just as hard as keeping weight off for us. So one thing that we all agreed on though, all three of us agreed on was that civilians do not have an issue with every discussion, every decision, every planning thing to get together revolving around food. I mean, they just don't. So they just don't, they just don't talk about it 24 hours a day like we do. I mean, like we wake up, what's for breakfast? Um, then, you know, as soon as breakfast is over, oh, what are we having for lunch? And as soon as before lunch is even over, oh, I was thinking about having a snack. Mm, maybe we'll have some dinner. What are we gonna have for Christmas? We're gonna have food, 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 food. They just don't think like that. So here is how to make your next get together do just that. So here's how to make it plan out, you know, play out more like a civilian. So the first thing is know before you go. So if the get together does involve food. So if it, if it actually, it does revolve around food and there's no getting out of that. Um, so like you're dining out, it's a party, it's a family event, something like that. Do your best to look up the restaurant or find out what the menu is going to be so that you can pre-plan what you're going to have ahead of time. So even if the menu is like a family potluck, you can do some things to, you know, to kind of plan ahead. And we do have chats for that if you want to go back and watch some of those, but do your best to know before you go kind of what's going to be there. Um, also pre-track what you can the best in the moment decisions are made when you've already committed to something on paper. So if you're if you're having an in the moment decision to have to have or to not have something or to eat or to not eat a certain amount of something, the best those best in the moment decisions come from when you've already pre committed to something. So if you've already written it down on paper or put it in your tracker, I'm much less likely to indulge. If I've already, you know, penciled in or, or typed in 18 points and I know that's going to be 30, I don't know, because I've already written something down, you know? So I think that one's a great one. And then decide before you get there, before you get there, just like we heard in the homework, decide before you get there that if something isn't good or doesn't meet the pre-planned point expectation, that you'll just leave it. You will leave it or you'll throw it away or you'll give it away. Okay, so go ahead and decide that. Second thing is coffee, tea, or me. And if you're old enough to know what that is, then you're as old as me. So coffee, tea, or me. I have a friend who likes to meet at a favorite coffee shop, but that coffee shop also has sweet treats that I find it hard to resist. And we're planning a, uh, we're planning on getting together soon. And this time I'm thinking about me. And I think you should think about me too. I'm just kidding, think about you. So coffee shop, there are so many local coffee shops now, probably also in your area, that I can choose one that does not have the yummy treats that I've already decided I have trouble resisting. Okay, so we can pick a different one. Um, a tea shop. Does your town have little tea shops popping up everywhere? We do, and we've got two more that are trying to open as soon as they can get zoning, um, get the zoning whatever things worked out. Um, but we have my favorite one is called Tanya Rees, and it is tea and a show. So when you go to Tanya's, uh, well, many of her trees are quite the little presentation. She has one called a butterfly that's like a whole thing, you know, when she does it. Um, and she knows so much about the ingredients that she has hand selected, you know, to go in there. So she's carefully, she's a licensed herbalist. So she has carefully selected the ingredients that are going to go into these teas um, that I know if we go, if I choose there or if I encourage, and I think she would go if I said, I know she would, she would go if I said to go there, um, that I can enjoy the experience without feeling like I have to go overboard on snacks while I'm there. Okay. Because I would be there for the tea experience, or you can just be an at-home barista 
And maybe you should set up your own low point hot cocoa or coffee bar using sugar free syrups, homemade cocoa blends, or no sugar creamers. I noticed today, and well, I was asked to get creamer for our for our actual Christmas Day event. Um, Casey's in laws are coming over. Alan's parents are coming over. And I don't drink cream in my coffee, but they had Willy Wonka sugar free creamer. Okay. I'm willing to try that. I don't usually put creamer in my coffee, but it was one point per tablespoon. I'm willing to try that. It's Willy Wonka. Okay, I'll try to remember to take a picture of that and show that to you all later. But you could save some money, points, and maybe save your sanity doing that. Then, oh, I'm running over. Enjoy the company. Have you ever been so preoccupied with what you're going to get on your second plate at the dessert bar hmm, that you got lost in the conversation that you were there to have? So here's a suggestion in between bites just put your fork down and just listen to what the other person has to say you know take a bite start chewing it put the fork down and pay attention to them for a second second thing offer to share a treat tell the waiter you want extra spoons and then let them go first let whoever is with you go first the last thing is mentally make a note of the sights the smells the sounds that are accompanying your meal before you take your first bite a lot of these places that you're going to have have spent a lot of time creating an ambiance that I miss sometimes, I just completely miss it because I'm coming and going, all right, where's the chocolate? When are we getting started? You know, whatever. And there's a, they've put a lot of time and effort into things, you know, to, to tickle your other senses besides just, you know, just your, besides just your sense of taste. Okay. This week's homework is hashtag keep it together. K-E-E-P-I-T-T-O-G-E-T-H-E-R. Keep it together. So your homework for this week, hashtag keep it together. Think of a get together opportunity coming up and let us know how you will get it together, how you'll keep it together while still keeping it together, okay? And yes, Sandra, it is time for a drink of water and then type it, snap it, however you wanna do it. Okay, I've talked this over the 30 minute mark. I'm gonna get my water turned back on. For those of you that are new at the 30 minute mark, we take um, take a break. So I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna turn my water back on. I'm gonna get my apron put on so that Casey will know when the second half starts. And I've gotta grab something out of the refrigerator. So I will be right back and thank you, Alicia and Lynn, for always posting what the homework is. I'll be right back. Nobody move. What we are working on for the second half is not anything that I could leave sitting out. So. I had to leave it in the refrigerator. Let me get this going here. So if you're new with us, this is an hour long chat and the first half of it is all classroom. So it is whatever WW went over the prior, the prior week. And then the second half is usually something fun, um, like a, uh-oh, Julie is behaving herself. So she gets a she gets a Bravo sticker for for behaving herself. Very good, good job. And here we go again. I wanted some more of this sugar-free Alpine mix for my drink tonight, and this little package does not like me. Okay, y'all help me get into this. Okay, so again, for those of you who are new, second half. Um, I put on the apron so that Casey knows how to divide this up. So if you ever want to come back. Um, on YouTube or even on Facebook and just watch what the second half was. You can do that by watching for the apron. Um, while I'm doing that, everybody grab yourself some water to drink. I have already had um, probably close to 80, probably close to 80 ounces of water today. So I'm gonna switch and have some of the sugar-free apple cider like we had last week. Okay, the second half of tonight's chat um, we are going to make, we're going to talk about five last minute holiday ideas that take 15 minutes or less. So some of you in the first half of the chat, some of you in the first three minutes of the chat already started panicking because you realized, oh shoot, I don't have everything done. I'm not finished with everything. Um, I still have stuff that I need to do. And Kelly just reminded me that Christmas is coming on the 25th this year. Yeah. Okay, hold on. So in case you didn't realize it, Christmas comes on the 25th every year, okay? I was just kidding. So some of you panic though, but here are five things that take 15 minutes or less that are super easy. I promise your guests, or if you're going to somebody's house, and somebody asked a few minutes ago what, what we were having for Christmas, 
there will be things there that will be higher in points. Um, so I'm gonna bring some things that I know everybody will love and that will be lower in points. But here are five holiday ideas that are 15 minutes or less, as evidenced by the fact that I'm gonna get all five of them done in less than 20 minutes, okay? We're not gonna make all, we're not gonna make all five of them tonight. Okay, the first thing, they're all gonna start, all of these are going to start with fat-free cream cheese. So we have made fat-free cream cheese several times. Um, when we do have a chat for that. So if you need to see exactly how to make it, we do have a chat for that. I don't know what number it is, but perhaps Jessica can go back and find it when she um, posts this on ifyouhaveanegg.com. If you didn't already know this, you can go to www.ifyouhaveanegg.com and all of the written notes for our chats are on there. So if you didn't take notes, can't take notes, if I'm talking too fast, they're all on there. So Jessica types all of it out so that if you need to print it out or read it, or you think, what did she just say? You know, you can go there and read it. Okay. And they're typed in English, even if what I'm saying doesn't sound like English. So this is, we're going to start, all of these are going to be with fat-free cream cheese. So the first of the five holiday ideas is make your own fat-free cream cheese. So I know you're thinking, Kelly, that takes longer than 15 minutes. Okay. The prep time is like three minutes, okay? So it cooks itself, it's not cooking, but it cooks itself in the refrigerator overnight. I actually, it only took me like four hours to do this one. Um, and then boom, you're ready to go. So you're ready to go in less than 15 minutes of total hands-on time in the kitchen. So even though this is gonna sit, preferably is gonna sit in the refrigerator overnight, your total hands-on time in the kitchen is less than 15 minutes to make this, okay? Um, and again, it's on if you have an egg.com. If you go to if you have an egg.com and search fat free cream cheese, you're gonna find this recipe and you're gonna find some ideas of what to do with it. Um, but I wanted to tell you this, it not only lowers the points in your holiday recipes, um, it also puts pennies back in your pocket. So when I was across the street, so I'm at Casey Kitchen Center, when I was across the street at Food City today, um, that uh, an eight ounce block of commercially prepared fat free cream cheese fat-free cream cheese was on sale for $2.99. A 24-ounce container of non-fat plain Greek yogurt was just under $6. And this was a name brand, um, like a bigger name brand. It was on sale for just under $6. Um, I can make approximately three to three and a half blocks. I mean, I don't necessarily put them in a block, but blocks of cream cheese whenever I need them. I mean, I don't have to make an entire block of cream cheese or the equivalent of an entire block of cream cheese. I can make it whenever I want to. Um, instead of um, instead of paying um, well for six dollars, so I can make up to three to three and a half blocks of cream cheese for six dollars instead of spending about nine dollars on the commercially prepared, having to use it after I open it, and having to throw away three little aluminum foil things or three little foil things and three boxes. Okay, I would much rather do it this way. So once your wow, that's hot. So once your cream cheese is made then you can put it you know in some kind of a smaller container to store it so i'm just going to go ahead let's see how many tablespoons this made i made this with um i did today i did the cream cheese in a um this is just a coffee filter so this is a reusable coffee filter and look how thick that is i mean so this was non-fat plain greek yogurt i put it into a reusable coffee filter set it on top of a coffee cup just to make sure that it's big enough to sit out of the, you know, to sit up out of the top of it so it can drain. And I'm gonna show you here in a second how much water I got off of this. But this is number one. And I was supposed to be measuring that and I just I forgot to, but anyway. So this is number one of the under 15 minute ideas. So this is make your own fat-free cream cheese. And so this was, I don't know, I'll let it sit in the refrigerator like four hours, like I was when I was getting ready for the chat. I don't know if you can see how much liquid is in there but in just four hours that much liquid came off of the non-fat plain greek yogurt and it is in fact now fat free cream cheese okay um oh hold on a minute debbie that's uh, that's intel secret intel that you've never shared with me before debbie says she does the same to make ground chicken. She prepares her own chicken breast and then grinds it herself so that she knows that it is just chicken breast and does not have um, any rib meat in it because she prepared it herself. How smart is that? So I just want you to see, I'm sorry that light's glaring on it. That is, it is cream cheese. So we have made cream cheese. Okay, 
So it took me three minutes to get that ready. It sat in the refrigerator for four hours, preferably sit overnight with something over the top of it, just, you know, a piece of plastic wrap or something over the top of it. But you will have cream cheese. You'll have fat-free cream cheese when you get done. And you spent a whopping, I don't know, five minutes, five minutes in the kitchen. Okay, so you can use that to make lots of different things. One of the things that we will be making, that I will be making um, for our Christmas this year is Windsor Karen's Buffalo Chicken Dip. I'm not gonna make that for you here because we only have like 19 minutes left, but Windsor Karen's Buffalo Chicken Dip is already on if you have an egg.com. If you've had it, go ahead and raise your hand. There's only like 50 something of you all here live, to, live tonight. That's a lot of you all here live just being five days before Christmas. But go ahead and raise your hand if you have ever made the Windstar Karen's Buffalo Chicken Dip. Um, just do it. I'm serious. Just make it. Make it. It has fat-free cream cheese. Um, it has a ranch dressing that I make with non-fat plain Greek yogurt. And, and the Dax um, nothing but ranch spice. And Lynn says it is delicious. Um, Betty's got her hand up. Betty has got her hand up. Alicia's got Alicia's saying it's so good. I'm telling you, everyone loves it. Everybody loves it. And start to finish, even if you include the three minutes that I had you put the non-fat plain Greek yogurt, Debbie's had it, in the colander, even if even if you spent include that three minutes to prep it, you you have 10 minutes tops in this total master in this masterpiece. And you make it all in the microwave. So after you've prepped your cream cheese, you're gonna make Winstar Karen's buffalo chicken dip. The whole thing is made in the microwave and it's just got cream cheese, some ranch dressing, and I make my own ranch dressing. There is also a chat for that. Um, it has Frank's red hot sauce. It has um, chicken. It's got um, uh, canned chicken breast, 98% fat free chicken breast. Or if you do like Debbie does, you could you would know that it was 100%. Nancy's got her hand up. You would know that it was 100% chicken breast if you were making your own um, ground chicken, you know, like Debbie does. And um, the whole thing, the whole thing is made in the microwave. It's so easy. I um, mean, uh, I use, um, oh, Velveeta shreds. Anyway, it's on the, it's already on the blog, www.ifyouhaveanegg.com, but I'm serious. Everyone loves it. You can use, use it as a dip with celery or with some kind of, um, some kind of chips or some kind of crackers, like we're going to talk about here in just a second. Um, you can stuff croissants with it. You can put it on a, on a roll-up pinwheel recipe. One of my favorites is to roll out reduced fat crescent rolls, spread that on there, roll them up, cut them, you know, slice them like this, lay them on a cookie sheet and bake them. Fantastic. They're fantastic like that. We even use the Winstar Karen's Buffalo Chicken Dip to make macaroni and cheese, okay? It's that good. I promise you, everyone loves it. If you love hot stuff, go ahead and be a little heavy-handed on the Frank's hot sauce. Um, I use a little less when I make it for my son-in-law, which I'll be, he'll be having some of it on Saturday. But then when Casey and I are ready to eat it, we just add some more on there. Okay, so that's another thing. Top, top, you know, start to finish, less than 10 minutes and you've got it ready to go, ready to feed everybody. This next one I'm super excited about. Cheese balls are back on the menu. So how many of you are like me and you had completely taken Holiday, oh wait, Debbie says stuff in dive lettuce with it. That sounds fantastic. I'm just serious, it's good on everything. Um, it's good on a spoon, but you should probably put it on something besides just a spoon. Um, how many of you, me included, had take, completely taken cheese balls off of your holiday list? So we used to have, we used to always have a cheese ball and sometimes it would be rolled, sometimes the outside of it would just be different kinds of crushed nuts. Sometimes the outside of it would be that, um, is it nor? soup mix y'all know what i'm talking about or that would be the outside of it but some i had a friend who used to make it she would take her cream cheese and she would put that nor soup mix in it and then she would put like ham or something on the outside um and she brought that for everything like this this woman she knew how to cook but um she chose not to cook <laughs> so she made a cheese ball for everything Some people make them sweet. Some people make them savory. Okay, this year I am making, and I did not print it off in color. I am sorry, but this year I am making a I'm making a drizzle me skinny recipe, and it is for an everything but the bagel cheese ball. Super excited because I love. So apparently I'm going to be eating a lot of fat free cream cheese, which means I'm going to be eating a lot of yogurt, which means my nails will be like super long um, by the week after Christmas. But um, I love 
love, love everything but the bagel um, seasoning. And that you can get everything, everything with the bagel seasoning at Trader Joe's. Just remember Trader Joe's is closed Christmas Day. I warned you about that in the beginning of the chat. So just remember that. Or you can use the Dax spices, the no salt, Dax spices, everything but the salt. It tastes exactly the same, but it just doesn't have any sodium. You can use that in this recipe. So I'm going to be making that using fat-free cream cheese and your own. You can shave the points off. You can shave off a lot of the points and um, you can enjoy all the flavor. And guess what? Your civilian friends will never know. So your civilian family and friends, they will never know. They'll never know that it was fat-free cream cheese and that you made it, unless you brag, unless they loved it, and then you and then you can brag that you made it yourself. So the Drizzle Me Skinny Everything with the Bagel um, Cheese Ball, <coughs> again, I'm gonna use the Dax Spices. I'm guessing you've got 10 to 12 minutes tops because again, you can make as much or as little as you need. If you needed one tablespoon, if you needed one tablespoon of fat-free cream cheese, you could literally make it because you're gonna make, you're gonna put however much you need in the colander. Um, if you use the cheesecloth, like I showed you in the original recipe, I mean, you can make as little or as much as you need. You don't have to make eight ounces. So for the cheese ball, if you just wanted to make a little one, a big one, whatever you want, you could do that. But the directions for that, and I'll, I will try my hardest to remember to either <coughs> video myself making this or I'll at least post it on my blog so that you can't, because if you all know, Drizzle Me Skinny is in Canada, so you cannot click on her recipes and have them come straight into your um, personal points engine. So I will, put, I will post this on mine. Of course, I will give Kate all the credit for this she's fantastic and awesome um but i will post it so that you all can put it into your you can touch the button and it will go into your personal points engine but it is basically eight ounces of light cream cheese nah, it's going to be eight ounces it's going to be eight ounces of homemade fat-free cream cheese that you made a fourth of a cup of fat-free sour cream and then you're going to use an additional um fourth of a cup of plain greek yogurt and um a cup, three fourths of a cup of light shredded cheese. She uses cheddar, three green onions sliced, and then six tablespoons of either the everything but the bagel seasoning you can get at Trader Joe's, closed on Christmas day, or the everything but the salt um, bagel seasoning that you can get from Dax Spices. And you can order that on if you have an egg.com or you can order it um, from Dax Seasonings um, direct. You can order it from them. Um, and then you put all of that together, mix it in a bowl, make your cheese ball, put the seasoning on the outside, I cannot wait to try it. Okay, and our family favorite. So number four, that was number three. Number four is our family favorite. Um, sausage balls, like it would not be Christmas if we did not have sausage balls. I have spent years not caring about the points. I have spent years trying to track all the points. I have spent years trying to lighten up the recipe. I've spent years doing everything. Um, this year, Alyssa and I are making a batch of my cream cheese sausage balls, which I just realized are not on the blog. So we will get that posted as soon as we're done. Perhaps we'll have some pictures of Alyssa making them because this will be her first year. But I'm gonna make a double batch. So I totally understand that I said that this is five 15 minute or less recipes and it's gonna take more than 15 minutes to make a double batch. But trust me, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, the coughing's not starting again. But trust me, it is worth that extra few minutes to go ahead and make a double batch while you're doing this so that you can put them in the freezer. So, I, I mean, I always make an extra batch and I keep them in the freezer for snacking, you know, later, just to grab a few, you know, pop them in the microwave later. And if you use the fat-free cream cheese recipe, it adds back some creamy because, in, I mean, in the past, my sister has always used, and my mom did too, full fat sausage, regular bisquick, and full fat um cheddar cheese so i mean it was full fat full and they were delicious and they were greasy you know mm -mm -mm. <coughs> but using the fat-free cream cheese adds back some creamy moisture so when you're using some lower fat content sausage like turkey sausage or a light sausage when you're using something like that and when if you use i don't know if y'all have seen this or not but i use the heart smart bisquick the Heart Smart Bisquick is lower in fat 
<coughs> it only has for a serving, which is a third of a cup of the mix, you're not going to be eating a third of a cup unless you're eating, you know, several sausage balls. But it's only two and a half fat, uh, two and a half grams of fat. But it's much lower in it's much lower in fat. <coughs> Excuse me, but because of that, it's a little drier. And then the turkey sausage or a, or a lighter sausage is a little bit drier. So the addition of the fat-free cream cheese moistens all of that up and it gives it just a more creamy um i don't know and it helps the cheese to melt too so we'll be making that um Alyssa and i will be making that tomorrow actually because she will be with me all day tomorrow so we'll go ahead and make that and we'll get those pictures posted and we'll get that recipe on there and who knows Alyssa might want to make it in front of you all so you might get to watch her make it in front of you Okay, and since several of you have got to go ahead and go on, and I sincerely do appreciate y'all being here on the Sunday night before Christmas, because again, you have like five days and a handful of hours. So this one is a no-brainer, literally a no-brainer when you've already got some fat-free cream cheese cooking in your refrigerator. Um, the only people who don't like this holiday combo are people who have not tried this holiday combo, okay? I haven't met anybody yet that doesn't like it. So I think the only people who don't like it just haven't tried it yet. Um, if you've already got some fat-free cream cheese prepared in your refrigerator, you are literally minutes away from being ready to serve this. And I'm gonna show you how simple it is to make right now. So this is approximately, this is approximately eight tablespoons of fat-free cream cheese. So I'm gonna put about half of that into this container. So, I mean, look how thick this is. It is, it is in fact cream cheese. So I'm gonna put about four tablespoons, and this recipe, by the way, will be up on if you have an egg in the morning, but I'm gonna put about four tablespoons of fat-free cream cheese into this little jar, and you can make more if you want to, but I'm gonna go ahead and put that into this little jar. And then I am going to add, either sweet and hot pepper jelly, so this is the red kind, or I'm gonna add green pepper jelly. And I like, when I can find it, I like the jalapeno pepper jelly even more. And based on the fact that, based on the fact that um, fat-free cream cheese is zero points for me, then it's a zero point food for me, then that makes this one point per tablespoon for me. But when we, when Jessica posts this link, when she posts this recipe tomorrow, it will have the link to the recipe builder in there and you can just click on that and it will go into your recipe builder and it will go into your, um, you know, your points. It'll go to your personal points. So that was about four, that was about four tablespoons of fat-free cream cheese. And then we're gonna add about two tablespoons and this is a half of a tablespoon measuring cup, measuring spoon. So we're gonna add approximately two tablespoons of one of the pepper jellies to it. And if you all have had this, if you all have already had this, you're sitting there thinking, oh yeah, she's exactly right. The only people who don't like that are people who have never had it. And that's that's exactly right. So once you get this all mixed up, um, I like to go ahead and mix it. Um, if you think that you're going to have some people that have a little bit um, less tolerance to heat and would like it to be more sweet, you can let them mix their own. You can just put the cream cheese out and then put the put the jelly out and let them make their own. You know, that's perfectly fine. But when you get done, when you get done, it's gonna look like this. And we will use this one as our taste tester. But I went ahead and made two ahead. That's the green pepper jelly, and this is the red. The green's a little bit more colorful. You can add some food coloring to it if you want to. But again, for me, it is one, for me, it's one smart point per, per one tablespoon serving <coughs> because I have um, fat-free cream cheese is on my, or non, sorry, not that plain Greek yogurt is on my zero point list. So it's one point for me, but this is fantastic. And it's so good on a, lot, a lower point um, cracker, something like this, like um, the Blue Diamond Almonds. These are nut thins, these are almond nut thins. Um, these are lower in points. I don't remember exactly how many it is you get for, you know, for a hand, this is a lot. You get like 15 or 18 crackers 
for like four points. It's a lot. I mean, you if you ate 15 to 18 of these, you wouldn't want anything else. And then Triscuits are also good for things like this. These are lower in points that um, Triscuits reduced fat. It's about, it's 25% less fat than a normal Triscuit. Also delicious, it's delicious with this. Um, I'm gonna try one of these for you and then we will wrap it up because several people um, are having to scoop since it is the holidays. But if you'll serve this when it's cold, it's got a really nice consistency to it. But hopefully you can see this. I don't know if you can or not, but this is these are delicious. Mm. It is just the right amount. It's just the right amount of sweet and hot. I have always been able to find some form of the pepper jellies at any major grocery store. Remember, some of them are not gonna be open, not going to be open for Christmas, so keep that in mind. Um, if you wanted to be extra fancy, you could layer this. You could do, you know, red pepper, green pepper, red pepper. I may actually do that for Saturday. Um, but it's a fantastically easy, easy, easy thing to make. You can make as much or as little of the cream cheese as you want to. You don't have to worry about Target being closed on Christmas Day. You can already have some of this going in your refrigerator. Okay, but that is it. That's all I've got for tonight. So the fat-free cream cheese recipe is already on if you have an egg.com. The hot pepper jelly cream cheese recipe will be on there. Um, I believe she'll have, Jessica will have it on there tomorrow. Um, the cheese balls, Alyssa and I will be, or the sausage balls, Alyssa and I will be making tomorrow. So I'll show you how to make those then. And I'll get that everything but the bagel, everything but the bagel cream cheese ball. We'll have that made just in time for Christmas. So I hope you all got some good ideas. I hope you've got a plan. I hope you've already budgeted for the big day or days or how many, however many days you have. Um, if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, just go ahead and let that next video roll over. I would love if you would watch the one from last week and the week before and the week before and the week before. Um, if you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and click this little button and check the bell so that you will know that you'll be subscribed and you'll know when the next video comes over. Um, and if you want one of our, one of our cool um, aprons or a sweatshirt or something, you can go ahead and click on this button over here for um, spread shirt, or our spread shirt store. But thank you very much. I will not see you all live again before Christmas. So Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, we will see you again next Sunday. I'm not planning on skipping any Sundays between now and 2022. So I hope to see you next time. Y'all have a great week. Merry Christmas.